Welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, uh, February the 7th. We will be singing from songs of faith and praise. Uh, we will have a couple of prayers and I will deliver a lesson that I hope will be beneficial to all of us. So if you want to sing along with us, if you would take your songbooks out and turn them to page 238. You are the song that I sing. 238. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the mighty God. You are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the song that you gave to me. You are the song that I sing. Number 296. <clears throat> 296, we have come into his house. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Number 422. Four twenty two Spirit of the Living God Spirit of the Living God Fall fresh on me Spirit of the Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for a time that uh, we have set aside to just pause and uh, take a, a little bit of time to think about you and think about your world and think about your kingdom and think about our place in it. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that we have a loving God that we can turn to who is our refuge in all kinds of times. Uh, we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, we would uh, bring glory to your name by our godly behavior, that we would strive for righteousness 
in our life that we would be more Christ-like in our actions. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we would look to our bulletins and uh, just uh, see uh, the names of those people who have uh, desired that we pray for them. And as we learn from the book of James that the prayer of righteous men are rich and powerful. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, uh, through this evening, uh, throughout our lives. Help us to look forward to the times that we are together and help us to look forward to the times that we are privately with you. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we will sing is number 770. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Words by the great American poet, John Greenleaf Whittier. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclaw the sin our rightful mind in purer lives thy service find in deeper reverence praise in simple trust like those who heard <coughs> be Sign the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord. Let us like them without a word rise up and follow me. Sabbath rest by Galilee, all come the bills upon, where Jesus now to share with thee the silence of eternity interpreted by love. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Thank you all for singing along with us. I know the Lord was praised in our song. Our lesson this evening will come from the ninth psalm. It will come from Psalm 9. And so if you have your uh, Bibles with you or your Bible app on your device, uh, if you would turn there, we are going to center in on those verses. All right, I have a, I'll start this lesson off with a question. How do we handle troubled times? How do we handle troubled times? Well, let's look at how David, the psalmist, in Psalm chapter 9, answered this question for us. But the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He, held, he, he shall judge the world in righteousness. 
and he shall administer judgment for the peoples in uprightness. The Lord will also, here we go, be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. That is Psalm chapter 9, verses 8 through 10. It's hard not to uh, talk about the times that we are in, but uh, uh, they get exacerbated from time to time. We've been in the midst of this COVID pandemic for about a year now. Uh, it seems unending. There is a vaccine. Uh, people are getting vaccinated, probably not fast enough. We'd like more and more and more thousands and thousands and millions of people to do so, that we can get a, a handle on this. Also, uh, oh, about two months or so ago, we had an election in this country. And that did not go without turmoil either. As a matter of fact, some of that turmoil is still with us yet. And on the day when the electors would be uh, officially uh, put into place so that the new president would uh, be accepted by the country after the vote, um, uh, the uh, Capitol building was accosted and broken into by uh, I guess uh, what we can actually call domestic terrorists. They weren't foreign people. They were people from our own country. And so as, as we look at our, just our country, forget about the world for a moment, just looking at our country, we live in what we might call times of trouble. And so, how do we deal with that? Well, I believe that the psalmist here, David, in Psalm chapter 9, starting with verse uh, 7 and going through verse 10, has given us an answer to this. Please consider how these words highlight the fact that the Lord is a refuge for his people in the time of trouble. Uh, we don't use the word refuge uh, much anymore, and we don't usually use it in the terminology that it's used here. A refuge is, is supposed to be a safe place. It's, it's supposed to be a place that we can trust, where things cannot harm us. And so, uh, let's take a look at the beginning of these words. And as we start the words here, it says, But the Lord shall endure forever. I would contend this evening that one of the reasons that God is a refuge in the times of trouble is that he will endure forever. Unlike an elected official who may be in power for a few years, may be in power for a term, uh, whatever it might be. There are no rulers on this earth that will reign forever. Okay, We are humans. We are finite beings. And so there may be those that uh, reign or uh, govern over us for a longer period of time. The longest that a president can be in office is eight years, and then uh, he cannot run for office again. A senator gets elected for six years. A representative to the House of Representatives uh, uh, gets elected for two years. And then all of these, excepting the president, can choose to run again. And so what usually happens is that the people who govern us govern us and have authority over us for a period of time and then turn it over to someone else. We have these words from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 31. And it says, 
Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Do you know, God can't ever be voted out of office. The, the Lord our God can never lose his position of authority and control. And so with that in mind, we have a steadfast and lasting Lord who will reign forever and ever because he's not finite like we are. He is an infinite being. Therefore, he can serve as our refuge in times of trouble. Okay, let's get to the second point in this lesson. If we look at the next words, it says, but the Lord shall endure for forever. It says, he has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall administer judgment for the peoples in uprighteous, uprightness. Now, this book of Psalms was written several hundred years before the birth of Christ, but it was a precursor to Jesus Christ because Jesus is the one who will be the good and righteous judge. And he shall administer judge on that day when he comes back to earth. Now, from an earth-type perspective, from an earthly perspective, Sometimes we think, well, the wicked are getting away with it, aren't they? Look at, look at what they've done. And it seems sometimes that they're getting away with their wicked schemes. And almost as if, almost as if they're, they're never going to be held accountable for their actions. But see, we know from both this psalm and from New Testament teachings that this is not true. Nothing could be even further from the truth. The Lord will judge the earth. The Apostle Paul, writing in Romans chapter 2, verse 6, says to us, And the Lord will render to each one according to his deeds. And then, later on, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, we have these very familiar words. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. What does that do to those folks, those schemers that we think are getting away with something? One day, everyone will stand before the judgment seat of God with Jesus as the righteous judge. And Jesus knows all that we have done in our life, and we will be judged accordingly. We will be judged according to those deeds that we have done. We will be judged according to the things that we have done with this uh, finite body. If we have used our bodies to serve the Lord and to love the Lord and to love our enemies and, yes, even love our, uh, love our neighbors and, yes, even love our enemies, then we, if we have obeyed Jesus into salvation... We'll live with him eternally. It will be a judgment uh, that we can think about and say, I'm going to live with the Lord forever. And so dovetailing into this, we get the third part of the lesson this evening. And that is, the Lord will save. Now we can go back to the psalm again. It says, the Lord will also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not 
forsaken those who seek you. You see, it is our job to constantly seek the Lord. It is our job here on earth as we live godly lives, as we try to engender the, the fruit of the Spirit, those virtues found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 in our lives. As we attempt to live our lives in service to you, Lord, as, as we uh, live our lives attempting to serve one another, we know that deliverance is promised to us. The Lord has the ability to provide salvation and deliverance. And the psalmist says it this way, for those who put their trust in him. When we obey the Lord unto salvation, all right, when we believe with all of our hearts that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, when we make that confession, when we are willing to repent of those things that we have done in the past, and we follow that into the obedience of baptism, we put ourselves in a position where we can be saved. The psalmist tells us why. For those who put their trust in him. When we do those things, when we obey the Lord's plan of salvation, we are fulfilling the words of the psalmist. We have put our trust in the Lord. And that is exactly, precisely what he wants. The Lord is a refuge. Now, let's, let's not think that our world is a world of uni, uh, unicorns and, and uh, bright colored bubbles and all of us singing Kumbaya from the time we get up in the morning till the time we go to sleep. We are going to face trials in, in the book of James, uh, James starts his book out exactly that way. If you have been uh, reading my devotionals each day, you know that I, I am covering the book of James right now. And in James chapter 1, verse 12, here's what the brother of Jesus writes. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You know, what the Lord wants us to, to do, uh, he wants us to, to face the, the temptations of life using him as our rock, finding refuge in him. He has told us that there is not a temptation out there that he has not given us the wherewithal to withstand. To make this sure, we know that Jesus set the example for us when he uh, didn't, uh, when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and the devil tempted him. And Jesus set the bar for us as he resisted the temptations of Satan. And so the Lord is a refuge for us because he is able to save us. Now Jesus put it in these words in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30. He said, "Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is answering the psalm, the psalmist. 
When he says this, he says, put your trust in me. Come to me. My burden is easy. You will find what you need in me if you put your trust, if you put your trust in me. He says, I will not forsake those who seek you, the psalmist says. Now, the Lord has never promised to remove all the world's trouble. But what he does do is he offers us rest. What he does do is he offers us a refuge. He offers us a safe place for all who come to him. Isn't that, isn't that comforting? Aren't those wonderful, comforting thoughts that the Lord promises us this rest? He promises us this refuge. He promises us, even when we stray, that through the grace provided through Jesus Christ and the work that he did on the cross, that our sins can be forgiven and that we can start with, with renewed vigor to live the way the Lord wants us to live. And so I would like you tonight, uh, and you have uh, a few hours perhaps before you put your head on the pillow, read over again, if you would, the ninth Psalm, verses 7 through 10. Read them. Meditate on them and look at what they actually mean to us. And then you will follow by asking yourself a couple of questions. How do I handle troubled times? Do I seek the Lord who is my refuge? When we look at it that way, it's pretty simple, isn't it? didn't say it was easy, but it is pretty simple. We have but to follow and to trust. And that is your lesson uh, for the evening. Would you bow your head in prayer with me, please? Our God and Father, we thank you for the short amount of time that we've had to give pause to praise your name, to pray to you, and just delve into your word and glean something from it. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to put our trust wholly in you. Put our trust in you because we know that you will endure. We know that you will judge. And we know that you will save. When we keep those things close to us, we realize that our job is to seek you, Lord, each day of our lives. Help us to uh, go to sleep tonight with Jesus on our heart and wake up with him on our heart. Help us in this, these uncertain times, since we have more time probably on our hands, to get into the word of God more and to read more of what you would uh, have us to do with our lives. Be with us through the evening, dear Heavenly Father. Help us... Uh, uh, until we meet again and, and we can be uplifted again by the fellowship of, of our Christian brothers and sisters. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Stay safe and may God bless you all. Father in heaven, how we love.